So this is for the purpose of understanding the relationship between the internal and the external experience which all of us are subjected to. And this internal versus external is in fact a manifestation of the process of omission and withdrawal. In other words, the practical implications of this understanding are that we can have simply a larger picture when it comes to this experience of pretty much everything. There is nothing that is not in the scope of that experience. Or, we could even say, experience itself is a result of that projection. That all of us experiencing this subject-object relationship not because we have somehow temporal division on a subject and object here on a human level even if it's sometimes spoken that way this this observer observing and the object of observation is nothing other than a reflection of that what is called here a larger picture. It is that emission of awareness out of itself. As everything that has a name and form. So pretty much the whole entire creation. And I bring your attention back to what we have spoken in our last darshan, the last darshan of the immersion where we have addressed this very, very relationship, how awareness progressively gets contracted as it begins to coagulate into the world of forms and phenomena. Awareness itself undergoes this process of coagulation to become the very forms or the objects of its own experience. And how that expansion at the cost of the contraction of awareness, that expansion of the universe or the expansion of creation, the expansion of the world of objects, is at the expense of pure subjectivity of consciousness. So it is this, what is known or called in Sanskrit, as expansion. This unmesha is accompanied by nimesha. It's accompanied by that contraction to which awareness gradually and progressively becomes subjected to. Moreover, as it expresses itself in its complexity and fullness, the more it expresses itself to its fullness, the more it becomes objectified in its own light or in the light of its own experience. Do you 
sense here that paradox how in order for fully express itself it has to undergo this at the expense or at the sacrifice of its unity, the sacrifice of its subjectivity. Here subjectivity is not spoken of as the part of the trinity of the observer, observing and observed. We speak about here as pure subjectivity of I, awareness. It's pure subjectivity of awareness which is only spoken in relation to pure awareness and nothing else. It's not spoken to in relation to subject, object, experiencing. In the same way, as the plentitude and plethora of this creation, awareness simultaneously is withdrawn from the objective experience back into its fullness as awareness and nothing else. And likewise, in reverse manner, it undergoes this at the expense of the progressive, progressive dissolution of the objectivity of consciousness. In other words, it's a progress progressive withdrawal from the world of objective experience through the subtle categories of creation all the way to compact mass of awareness and nothing else. So now we can trace this or see this as this process of contraction in expansion. Expansion and contraction and contraction and expansion is this relationship between unmesha and nimesha that takes place simultaneously at both ends of the extreme or the, the extreme poles of its manifestation. So seeing this for what it is in very, very terms of our own experience where in meditation this gradual progressive withdrawal from the objectivity of sensory experience to the objectivity of mental modifications, mental experiences, how all this progressively becomes more abstract, from more concrete to more abstract, therefore more subtle, and how this process very often culminates in complete withdrawal of consciousness from the experience of the object of experiencing. And consciousness abides in itself and nothing else. That's what by definition Samadhi stands for. Yes, there are different kinds of Samadhi, but this is to be understood first of all in that trajectory. So there is this clarity that this exposition doesn't turn to be just a kind of intellectual philosophical picture. It is experienced by all of you. All of you. Furthermore, countless examples have been given how that functions naturally without anything, as it, as it were, by common men. Common being experiences this through waking, dreaming and deep sleep. When the waking begins to be withdrawn into the dreaming, as the growth begins to be withdrawn into the subtle, into the astral. And senses repose in a finer realm where our mind operates on its own with no limitations imposed by physical laws. And after a while even that begins to be withdrawn 
that whole astral subtle realm begins to be withdrawn into the domain of the causal when the deep sleep takes over the dreamless state takes over the dreaming state of consciousness and the same thing is being observed now there is even less objectivity of experience because now the mind itself is withdrawn into a subtler sphere of causality in the same way that deep sleep is withdrawn into transcendental states of consciousness and the experiences essentially that are available there also very instructive because one can abide as pure abstract luminosity of one's own awareness without anything floating in that awareness other than simply simply awareness of that I amness simply that awareness of beingness when coming out of that one may be short of words to describe this because these are not the so-called spiritual experiences or visitations or illuminations or some spiritual pernafernalia we're not necessarily see, seeing the Virgin Mary or experiencing some kind of communion with the archetypal forms of energy it's just that pure abstract experience but that abstract experience is pervaded by the sense of it is experienced by myself I am experiencing this it's undeniable therefore when this is not clearly understood one may abide in Samadhi but coming back from Samadhi when that process of withdrawal is being projected back into the experience of the objectivity of the world immediately immediately this experience is given to memory and one begins to interpret that experience and that I is infused with identity with the corporal reality of the body and hesitation rises was I in Samadhi or not I was there as this person so I must have somehow was not deep enough this is where the confusion is being removed that the subjectivity of experience reigns supreme and even when one claims that I was nothing in my meditation I was totally shunyata I was totally void in my meditation I reached the stage of void there was nothing maybe even pitch blackness of unfathomable depth nothing in that who can report back with that experience if there was not uninterrupted unbroken continuity of pure subjectivity so this is simple clarity this is given this to a scrutiny of intellectual discrimination where experience is the most or for the most instructive factor and all we're doing is superimposing this of what has been said earlier in terms of this unmesha versus nimesha how they are simultaneously working depending at what is the operating power when awareness experiences it experiences itself as projection which reflects back its own luminosity it experiences itself as this objectivity of the world when awareness begins to be withdrawn back into, it compacted, into it, its compacted mass of consciousness then it does so at the expense of objectivity it cannot be otherwise 
So this, if you see this clearly now, to whatever degree, you will understand why traditions came up with this perspective of ascend versus descend. You will understand this now, what tradition speaks of here, in terms of, and I'm speaking about various traditions, speaks of as descent of consciousness into matter and ascend of objectified consciousness into pure subjectivity or back into spirit. Speaking in more of a Christian terms, descend of consciousness into matter, descend of spirit into matter and ascend of matter into spirit. The process of transfiguration spoken of by Christian mystics and Gnostics. It's the very late motif of many discourses by Sri Aurobindo where he spoke about this as a two-way process, not to disregard one in favor of the other. And this also gives this yogic trajectory where this whole process of awakening of latent consciousness exemplified by that coiled serpent energy that ascends, ascends, and in itself exemplifies the very process of withdrawal. You see? So in other words, this perspective of how consciousness limits itself through the various categories of its own manifestation to the experience of individual being and how that same consciousness frees itself from all the impositions that it had acquired on the way of that coagulation in reverse mode or in reverse way you can see this as a progressive process of withdrawal accompanied by first transgressing through the subtler phenomena through the subtler categories which is what spiritual experiences are essentially f known for just as consciousness is withdrawn from the world of objective experience, it is accompanied by ever so subtle experiences and there is a very, very, we could say, infinitely wide variety of these experiences because though some of them are archetypal and could be classified and could be put together in, through and also given the scrutiny of categorization but there are just as many as there are beings who go through that process so you see that this process of descent into matter and ascent into consciousness what gave rise to the understanding of awakening itself it's that perspective and for Someone who is not aware of the more integral perspective, this could be an ultimate picture. And this is where the doctrine of Spanda states that yet for the one who is initiated into the process, this is seen as simultaneous process and descent is indispensable from the ascent just as ascent is indispensable from the descent and this is where as the particular scriptures speak the yogi places the emphasis this is where the adept in the making places the emphasis not just in ascent of consciousness but it places its emphasis 
on being aware at once of these two streams within awareness. Because by now I hope there is somehow this understanding that these are two streams that flow in opposite direction. And the very secret of Spanda, the very notion of Spanda here, is to find oneself. in that stream. It's to find oneself in that vibrancy, in that pulse. This in itself is spoken of as pulse of consciousness. That unmesha and nimesha, or that ascent and descent, is spoken of in terms of pulse of awareness. And tapping into that pulse of awareness is what Spanda is as a term.